We've recently done our national survey of our clients and we included in there a question in terms of how the, pos the two possible outcomes might affect the HR functions um, of their business and 25.4% said Brexit would affect them for the worse um, with 5.3% giving a similar response in the event of staying in. What we also found um, was that there's more concern over business in general and trade rather than um, than, than, than the concern yeah. over the HR implications. It, see, it seems there by those figures that, that businesses are concerned because they're uncertain about what's going to happen if we leave the EU. Is, is, that, is that correct? Um, yes, there's uncertainty on, on, on both on both sides. Um, and and that's not good for any business and when small businesses are the lifeblood um, of the UK because more than 90% of businesses have got five employees or less the uncertainty then is making them hold back from growing from from, from recruiting and that's not going to be going to be good for the economy I mean let's turn it on the other side how are employees going to um, be affected by a potential leave or at the same time potentially staying in there's unlikely to be a huge, a, a huge impact because with the employment legislation that we've got in the UK already, it's over and above what Europe requires us to do. For example, shared parental leave, that was UK legislation, not European. Um, the one piece of legislation that we've got, which is the uh, working time um, directive, that will, that will stay, um, but it was the in the recent case with Locke versus British Gas and overtime and holiday pay, the ruling came from Europe for that because of the interpretation that, that Europe put on the working time regulations. So if we leave where the, the, the there may be consideration, do, do we then repeal that? And, yeah. um, but it's all, nobody nobody knows. I mean, it's all in the air, but businesses do get two, if we do leave the EU, businesses do get two years to before we actually have to leave so you know plans can be made can't they yes absolutely um, even if um, there's a decision to, to, to leave next week it'll be two years before we actually um, then do, do leave um, which then gives business times to plan and we will always have our ear to the ground and be keeping on top of all the changes positive or negative so that we can make sure that our clients are always kept up to date yeah. um, and legal and obviously a big theme throughout the whole debate, immigration. This is going to affect businesses massively, isn't it, if, if we come out or stay in? Again, there's question marks over well, how, how will that actually um, then change things from, from an employment perspective. There's discussions, well, will it be a points-based system um, such as Australia um, has? Will we have to do more immigration checks when we're um, employing people from, for, from overseas? Um, they're all considerations, but again, nobody nobody knows what the answers are. And we see there, yeah, like we're saying, uncertainty. No one's going to know until the 23rd. Are there any plans that businesses can start making now, or is it all going to be left until until last minute, really? From um, an HR perspective, it's it's making sure that you're up to date and legal um, already. Um, and then we can we can then make efforts to, to, to then keep keep those clients up, up to date and legal with whatever changes are. But as I say, there will be there will be two years then to to, to, to then um, actually make any changes. And so the main thing as well, should employees be worried about a possible Brexit or a possible stay? Um, because there's likely to be, from an HR point of view, little change as, as for employees. I, I, I would say not, not to not to actually worry um, at, the, at the moment. Not to worry yeah. at the moment. Hold yeah. tight and wait for the result on the 23rd yeah. of June.